All right, 5.2, the sine and cosine function. The sine and cosine function are basically called sinusoidal curves. Sinusoidal curves are curves that has the form of a sine wave. And a sine wave is just, you'll see in just a moment. Now, what's important that I want you to do is be able to copy the following table and complete the entire table for f at x equals sine x, f at x equals cosine x. And what's going to be important is that eventually you're going to see a wave that looks up and down and up and down and up and down and up. I gather you get the idea. Is the fact that this wave continues on forever and ever in both directions. And we're going to look at those types of functions, but you have to be able to draw them first. Now, what I want you to do in order to understand how to draw sine and cosine is I want you to look at the exact and the approximate values of the following degrees. And I want you to go in increments of 30 degrees. Why? Well, eventually what we're going to do is build on this idea and be able to build the five basic points that we're going to need for every sine and cosine function. And you're going to go from 0 degrees all the way to 360 degrees. And once you do it from 0 to 360, you'll be able to graph everything. So I want you to go from 0 to 360, give me the exact values, and then 0 to 360 to give me the decimal values, because you're going to use this to graph your functions. And I, what I want you to do is complete the same process for the cosine function and hand in these two tables and two graphs to be able to, so it will be four tables total, approximate and exact, and the two graphs. So we're not going to look at tan until the grade 12 year, and we're only looking at sine and cosine. Now, let's look at some examples so that you can understand how to approach this problem. So, you're in a car of a Ferris wheel. The wheel has a radius of 8 meters and turns, and turns counterclockwise. Let the origin be at the center of the wheel. Begin each sketch in parts A and B, and when the radius from the center of the wheel to your car is along the positive x-axis. Sketch the graph your horizontal displacement versus the angle through which you turned for one rotation of the wheel. So what does that mean? So let's look at this carefully. So when we start, we start on the positive x, so we start at the center along the positive x-axis right here and the wheel will go in a counterclock and it's 8 meters in radius length and then we're going to go around in a counterclockwise direction. Well, how will that help us? Well, we need to draw a graph going sideways now. As we move, we're measuring the horizontal displacement. So horizontally, how far away are we from the x-axis? Well, we start off 8 meters away. So when we start it off, we start 8 meters high. Okay, 8 meters away. So we start at the height of 8 meters. So we are 8 meters away. And then we're going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction to get to 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the first one. 90 degrees is up here. And how far away are we from the y-axis? So we're always measuring the distance from the y-axis. We start off 8 meters away from the y-axis. As we go here and here and here and here, we're actually getting closer to the y-axis. So at 90 degrees, we actually hit 0. We are 0 meters away from the y-axis. Now we're going on this side. That means we're going to go in a negative direction. Negative 2, negative 8. 180 degrees, we've rotated halfway around the whole Ferris wheel. 180 degrees, we're now negative 8 meters from the origin. Now we're going to move around to this side over here, and we're going to move to 270. How far away are we from the y-axis? Well, we are 0 away from the y-axis, so that number is 270. And then we're going to go right back to 360, and that leads us back to 8 meters away at the top. Now, if you did the graphs that you were supposed to do, you would notice that this, what we just drew, mimicked the 
cosine function. So this is our cosine wave, our sinusoidal wave that represents the cosine function, and here it is. Let's try part B now. We're now going to sketch the graph of the vertical displacement versus the angle through which you turn for one rotation of the wheel. Which function models the vertical displacement? So the first one modeled the cosine. The horizontal displacement modeled the cosine function. Let's look at this one. Again, we start vertically though. How far from the x-axis are we? Well, we're right on it. So we're zero away from the x-axis. As we move up here, we'll be 90 degrees and at 8. Then we're going to go to here, which we're at 0, 180 degrees and 0. Going down here, 270 degrees and negative 8, and back at 360 and 0. When we graph all these dots, we end up having a sine wave. So this one represents, the B represents a sine wave. A represents a cosine wave. So what we've done is actually here modeled our basic sine and our basic cosine wave. All right, so how does that help us? Well, our sine x function, our basic coordinates are as follows, 0, 0, 91, 180, 0, 270, negative 1, 360, and 0. That is our sine wave. Our cosine wave is... 0, 1, 90, 0, 180, negative 1, 270, 0, and 361. So 0, 1. So when we plot it here, if we look up here on our actual graph, 0, 1, 90, 0, 270, negative 1. Sorry, 1. Let's try that again. 0, 1. 90, 0, 180, negative 1, 270, 0, 361. So it's very important that you draw a sketch of this and then you're able to use these coordinates. The x coordinates are always 0, 90, 180, 270. The x coordinates again, same thing, 270, 360. And then we're going to be fluctuating between the maximum and the minimum values. All right, so. Here are our basic coordinates that you're going to use to be able to draw all your sinusoidal functions in this unit. Alright folks, have a numerical day. Take care.